For those real estate professionals who are involved in selling commercial properties, it's important to gain an understanding of the income capitalization approach to appraisals. Since this is one of the more complicated types of property appraisal, this process will generally take longer. When would income capitalization be used? Property that is expected to generate income for the owner is usually appraised using the income capitalization approach. This would apply to facilities like office buildings, shopping malls, and large apartment complexes. If you recall, multifamily apartments with more than four units are considered commercial properties. What is the income capitalization approach? The income capitalization approach to appraising property means the appraiser will value the property by using net operating income and dividing it by the capitalization rate, also called cap rate. The specific formula looks like this. Net operating income divided by the capitalization rate equals the market value. There is one important thing to note about capitalization rates based on this formula. The lower the capitalization rate, the higher the property value, and vice versa. The higher the capitalization rate, the lower the property value. Capitalization rates are an indication of risk. A real estate investor would apply higher capitalization rate to a property if they feel the property is more of a risk from an investment standpoint. On the other hand, a real estate investor would be willing to use a lower capitalization rate if the property is less of an investment risk. Capitalization rates vary from property type to property type and neighborhood to neighborhood. A luxury apartment building may also be sold using a capitalization rate of only 5% since it may be deemed less of an investment risk, while a 30-year-old apartment building in a bad neighborhood may be purchased at a 10% capitalization rate. Knowing your terms. Before gaining an understanding of how this method of appraisal works, it is helpful to understand the terms that are associated with obtaining the market value. Net operating income. This figure is calculated using the rental amounts the property is generating and subtracting the normal expenses of the property. The mortgage payments are not considered part of the expenses. Capitalization rate. This rate is determined by the return the investor is anticipated to get on the property. For example, if a building was generating $30,000 in net operating income and the property sold for $300,000, the capitalization rate is 10%. 30,000 divided by 300,000 equals 0.10 or 10%. Determining value using the income approach. As we previously indicated, the formula for determining value using the income approach is net operating income divided by the capitalization rate equals the market value. To further understand how this formula is used, to get to the current market value, it's important to know how each number is determined. To calculate the net operating income, you first have to know the gross income. The gross income is based on all income the building is expected to generate. This would include rental fees, parking fees if applicable. In the case of an apartment building, it would also include fees such as those applied to pets or income received from laundry facilities. One can use the average market rents for similar properties in the area and base the gross income on 100% occupancy. For example, if the going market rent for a two-bedroom apartment three blocks away is $1,000 per month, and the building has 20 units that are two bedrooms, then the gross income is $1,000 multiplied by 20 units multiplied by 12 months, which is equal to $240,000 gross income. Gross income is good for an investor's bottom line, 
and it would be great if one could count on 100% payment and occupancy year-round. Reality is much different, however, so the gross income isn't what gets used to reach a market value. The property will seldom be 100% occupied, and from time to time, the property owner will be unable to collect one or more months' rent. This estimate, usually a percentage of the overall rents, is calculated to arrive at the effective gross income. For example, you may know that due to tenant turnover, vacancies, and uncollected rent, you would consistently lose 10% of the gross rents in a year. That means that the effective gross rent will be 90% of the total gross rents. Finally, there are the overall expenses of the property. Remember, the mortgage payments will not be used as expenses. Fixed expenses, which are expenses that do not vary, such as taxes and insurance, are added to variable expenses, such as reserve requirements for replacing appliances, ground maintenance expenses, such as snow removal and landscaping, and utility payments. These expenses are then deducted from the effective gross income to determine the net operating income of a building. Finally, the capitalization rate should be determined. Remember, this is the anticipated rate of return an investor would expect on the property. This is calculated based on net operating income and the sales price of the property. The formula looks like this. Net operating income divided by the sales price is equal to the capitalization rate. The appraisal steps for the income capitalization approach. Since both lenders and buyers will have an interest in the overall market value of the subject property, the appraiser's job is a bit complicated. Whenever possible, the appraiser will want to obtain income and loss statements from the actual property because they will provide them with the most accurate information, bearing in mind that there are still other ways to get the value. Step 1. Determine market rent. The appraiser must determine what the average market rental rates are in the area for properties that are similar in structure. For example, one would not take rent from an office building and apply it to an apartment building. Comparing apples to apples is important for this step. The appraiser will typically use the full occupancy rate, allowing them to calculate potential gross income. Step 2. Vacancy and Missed Payments Appraisers need to decide on average vacancy rates. Should the appraiser have access to the most recent income statements for the property, this calculation is straightforward. Lacking that, the appraiser can use typical vacancy and default rates for comparable properties, which can often be obtained from the last sales data for those properties. These losses are deducted from potential gross income to arrive at the effective gross income. Step 3. Total operating expenses. Some fixed expenses, such as taxes and insurance, are easy to obtain. Tax rates can be obtained from the municipality, and insurance rates can be obtained from a reputable insurance provider who has similar properties in their portfolio. Variable expenses, such as reserves, will be calculated based on numerous factors, including what amenities the owner offers to tenants, what furnishings and fixtures are part of the building, etc. The appraiser should review the purchase and sales agreement, as well as speak with the property owner to obtain these figures. Once the appraiser has the estimated total operating expenses, they will be deducted from the estimated gross income to arrive at the net operating income. Step 4. Capitalization Rate when the appraiser reviews similar properties that have sold in the area, they can arrive at a reasonable capitalization rate. For example, 
If a $500,000 property averaged $50,000 a month in net operating income, they would use the capitalization rate of 10%. Net operating income divided by sales price equals capitalization rate. Remember, the most effective way to get the true cap rate is to get the actual net operating income from the property owner. Step 5. Determining value. The last step the appraiser will take is to establish the market value of the property. This is done by dividing the net operating income by the capitalization rate of the property. Keep in mind, these results are an estimate and nearly anything can have an impact on the result including tax increases, supply and demand, and sales of similar properties. The income capitalization approach to appraisals is typically only used on commercial properties. Commercial properties include large apartment complexes, strip malls, shopping centers, and office buildings. This appraisal approach is not always a perfect gauge of real value, however, because there are numerous factors that can have an impact on the income of commercial properties. Lenders are often concerned about funding properties such as malls unless there is a long-term lease with a tenant who would be considered an anchor. Let's face it, a mall with a long-term lease with Walmart is more valuable than a mall where the best-known tenant is Bill and Tom's BBQ stand. As a real estate professional, if you focus on commercial properties, in many cases, you may also find that the buyers of these properties would like to have this type of appraisal completed before they agree to sign a purchase and sales agreement. This process can be complicated and take additional time versus other methods of appraisals.